is my Potter's Journal. It's midsummer, late summer, 2023. I feel like I just won the Academy Award for Potters. I spent, um, you know, six couple of months working on new techniques, discovering new bots, successful show, and Tiffany over at Hobble Creek Pottery sent more people to watch money of my videos than when I release it. I feel like I just won the Academy Award for Potters. Now what? Now what? Sleeveless or not, I may still have a few tricks up my sleeve. I always have my Potter's Journal to fall back on. There's always something in here I haven't done yet. Actually, here we go. We need to make some glaze testers. And here is that trick up my sleeve. It is a five gallon bucket of free glaze. Now you've got free glaze in your studio too. You just may not know it. Let's see what's going on in the studio today, pretty or not. So when you're cleaning the glaze off the bottom of a pot, Okay, and you clean that sponge off in the water. That is free glaze you could be collecting. And look at this. After draining off the water, that's practically pure glaze. And when you mix your glazes with a drill, with a whisk, with a um, by hand, okay, that too is all free glaze when you clean it off. And in addition to the free glazes, I've got a number of commercial glazes here from Standard. We've got to get these mixed and tested. And five-eighths of a pound. There are 20 ready to go here. Test tiles. Test tiles. Not the way everybody does it. I actually sell my test tiles. In the past, they've been relatively cheap. But I am going to make a mixed bag this time and have both plain and fancy. So these I will come back with after we get them off the wheel and we'll put those tulips and the hearts and the birds and everything. So we've got, oh that one did not come off nice, but it did lay down nice. Okay over on the table. <clears throat> so these will be plain and fancy and after making our way to the top okay with decorative pieces and you know um, my first hundred and fifty dollar pot we are down back at the bottom we are down back to the mundane parts of the pottery it's okay, you've got to mix the clay. You've got, I've got to, um, I'll be at the south side of store village coming up relatively soon. I'm going to make a ton of pie plates there. Um, I'm, I'm, and this is actually now the test for the clay body. I was given some old sculpture clay. And I've mixed it with um, I, I bought a bag of dry of my standard um, ceramics hazelnut clay body, a dark body that gives a reduction like look and an ox oxidation kiln. So I, I've mixed the two half and half and I want to, I think I've tested it already, but I want to, okay, test it to see what it looks like before I do know a big batch of pie plates and yeah this time getting back to the pie plates again I'll have to do the same thing there I will have to do the not exactly plain and fancy but the simple and more complex and let's see if we can came off nice so 
and then seeing so many people find my video um, from Tiffany's link more people than usually watch them when I post them it was so much fun and um, I don't think I've ever had that many subscribers in a short period of time I've checked the demographics I know who you are okay welcome welcome ladies to my Potter's Journal I'm um, a bit more of a purist Potter I'd say there's a bubble in there and I'll say you might as well just hit unsubscribe right now I um, was the instructor for a workshop for about 10 years in a pipe pipe plant doing um, garden and garden art and sculpture and I know what you like okay you like lots of tools that do all kind of great tricks and projects I don't like tools I use the very basic and I even like these simple they sell them to high schools Kemper tools and I'm happy just with what I can do with my hands and the only thing else I may add is a fork for scoring so if you like tools okay scoring with a needle will get you nowhere get a fork and you can make four lines at once or just one slash for putting on a handle okay and you know this is good practice because I'm a bit new at the um, slip trailing I'm trying to do the Slovenian squiggle as opposed to my old wave and yeah if um, no matter what your skill levels are for me I'm trying to build up numbers after not throwing pots for a few weeks um, this is to get back into it and also since I count how many pots I make I make you know about a thousand pots in a year and I haven't done anything yet um, this month this actually helps get you know the numbers up also if your skills aren't that big or that good this is a great way to repeat something over and over and over again and learn those movements even though <laughs> okay even though I don't necessarily make the same moves with each one a good skill builder and these have a lot of functions you know I I um, it shows people like the guess what it is shelf with the sponge holder and the spoon rest and the well let's just say what these plates could be good for these plates would be great spoon rests these plates are great um, sponge holders somebody said they were using them for they can be used on the table as little dessert plates or breakfast croissant plates or you know why would you really want to make a ring holder with a spike up through the center um, if you're trying to sell them at a festival and have such a limited audience when something like this would be a great spoon rest and after you throw it on there if it's not right in the center you know a little bit that way and a down to push it on But I do want to thank everybody for following me through <laughs> since we're back to the mundane you probably clicked out but thank everybody who did follow me through okay what was a major <laughs> um, 
direction and developments for me over the past six weeks. It's hard to wedge those little clays that I think um, sometimes I was actually putting more air into them than I was taking out. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for um, <laughs> sharing, okay, in that bit of triumph that, um, yeah, I don't know, this is my, what, third, fourth, fifth, sixth life as a potter that um, I can say with the Slovenian pottery, with the slip trailing, with the, uh, the bunt, the Petitza bakery pan, the Potichnica or Potichnik, depending on which way it's written. I, I I felt okay that I found a place and that I'm content and happy with the direction my work is taken again. That um, you know when I was in my 20s, it was um, firing and using a wood fire on a gamma kiln. I'm glad I did that in my 20s, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that right now, I think I'm going to be happier. Taking that slip trailer and coming back to these and putting the tulips, the hearts, the birds, decorating in a small corner of the studio in the heat of the summer with the air running. And I just place these in the center of the wheel using the rings. Um, they're on there to center them, and then it feels like it's centered. <laughs> no, no crazy tap centering or anything. Um, this is the next day. I, you know, I made these so they kind of didn't need trimmed. I, can't, I have just thumbed them off, but it doesn't seem to take that much more time to give them a little extra refinement. That. Um, you know, really finishes the piece. And, okay, that was too wet. I go over it with a damp sponge. And then I have this, okay, little tool here. And I use the real fine little lines to put the impression of a foot on it. And when somebody turns it over, okay, that's one more look of refinement. And how much time did that really all take? And here we go, a couple weeks later, I have got them bisque fired, decorated plain, and fancy. But I wanted you to see the very first test tile of the free glaze. It's too thin yet, I need to drain some water off, and I didn't even put it through the sieve. But I did want you to see that we've got an amber, there is potential here. We can make changes in it yet. We may make an ash glaze out of some of it. We may put some cobalt in that ash glaze. So whether we get to this this fall or in the winter, I will say stop back and see what's going on in the studio next week with free glaze.